he's gone now. And uh, we want to know who you think is going to win this. So, got an award-winning smile there. I was very happy that... Caster of the Year here, 2018, by Stop the way. Stop it. He's got the... Stop it. He's got the winning smile to the boot. It. Thank you. That's really nice. Did you say boot? A boot? To boot. Oh, I didn't do the a boot thing, but with the... How we I, say I'm it. not Canadian. He's not how we say it. He's Canadian. How boot? How I'm boot? How boot? British. How boot we... We read the the. Scores oh yeah, down so here, Ninjas of Pajamas overwhelming landslide there, eighty four percent I think it was. I didn't, I didn't massive catch margin. It. Yeah, they they massive definitely margin. are the team slotted to win this one according to the community. Popular team, doing pretty decent. They've been on the ascendancy, and for the longest time, when they were actually known as Black Dragons ages ago, this was consistently one of the best rosters in Latin America, and actually yep. statistically one of the best teams in the world as well. Because you saw Black Dragons when this roster playing as Black Dragons, they finished second in Sao Paulo. They made it into the Final Four in Paris. You know, they, they come in to, they, they, don't, they don't qualify for Atlantic City, a bummer for them. They do qualify and end up being the only team from Latin America to make it out of the group stages in Paris. This is a roster that is always there, consistently performing in the top four, top two in BR6 as well. A bit of a stumble. They're looking to bounce back. They've been bouncing back. They need to win this matchup, I think, to, to keep that momentum going because if you lose too many games at the start of the season, you dig yourself a really big hole. Look at NA. They were known as Mouse Sports last season. Now they're, now they're known as Rise Nation. They had the second best half of any team in North America. But they failed to make it to the playoffs. Why? Because they were dead last in NA after the first half of the season. Imagine if they'd won even one or two more games it would have been in Rio competing for their region. So that's a pretty constant reminder for these teams and a pretty uh, specific reminder to not let games get a, get out of hand at the start. It's the same thing for Nip, though. I mean, they were at the bottom in LATAM going, going off the first half. Second half, they they actually stayed there for the beginning of the second half. And then sudden, just victory after victory of nonstop wins for, for Ninjas and Bananas, and they put themselves in the middle. They climbed. Yeah, they climbed. But, again... That's why I'm so excited for Ninja's Pajamas going into this season. I think they are definitely a team to watch because they have the potential to be top of the board in Latin America if they keep their wins going. With Ince, they do have a new roster. So there was, you know, when we saw the Latin America teams play last time, it was well over, you know, it was almost a month ago. And when you look at that, a lot of these teams didn't really have a big opportunity to gel. First of all, you had Rio ending, you had BR6 still active, you had DreamHack Winter for all the teams that wanted to come. Now the only Latin America team that came to DreamHack Winter was Liquid. But the transfer window, like the, for, for teams to drop players and pick up new players before rosters lock, is quite small. You don't have a ton of time to fine-tune your roster and hit the ground running. It's a learning curve. And you, you said this to me on the break, and I think that you should repeat it now because we didn't have a time to say it in the previous matchup, about the mid-round adaptations that you saw oh, out yeah. of both Black Dragons and Team Liquid in the first match. And I think this speaks also for the way that rosters gel with one another over the course of a season. Yeah, so I was talking about, it, I'm sure if you watched the previous match, you would know that I was talking about how Black Dragons and Team Liquid, they were making a lot of really basic mistakes. But the thing that makes them professional teams was that they weren't, just tripping over the mistakes over and over and over again. They had a couple stumbles here and there and, you know, regressions, but they found those stop-gap solutions and they implemented them like that. And again, that's what makes them professional teams. That's why we saw that be such a close contest. Both teams were struggling, but they both managed to patch up their problems and give us a good match regardless. Uh, and hopefully we'll see that here in this next match, or, or maybe just no problems to begin with. Maybe we'll see the perfect match. It could happen. Oh, it, ha it does happen from time to time. We do see the perfect match. Uh, uh, let me see. EG Penta uh, Invitational Finals 2018. Match of the year. Match of the year. We're just going to run I through mean, all that, the that, CGG awards, apparently, that was, as, as we keep if going. We're, if we're being fair and honest, that was not just match of the year. That's match of the siege. I, I, I think that is the best match that has ever been played. It's, it's Siege's match. Yeah. If, you want, if you're new, if you're watching right now and you're new to uh, Siege Rainbow Six and you're sick of hearing us uh, wait for the match to start, then you should check out um, the 2018 Invitational Finals. You can't discourage people from watching us right now. Finish watching us. Yeah, do that. Sorry. Um, finish. What finish, are you doing? Finish what watching us first, okay? And then when and then when Latin America Pro League is done. Yeah. So don't. And then go watch the match. Don't tune out. Don't change. We that. have action. Don't change yet. that dial. No, but um, what I was trying to get at there was that uh, yeah, okay, the mid round adaptations. 
really important part of anybody's play, and it was very impressive to see both Black Dragons and Liquids implement them so readily. We have the same potential for that here. I, I look forward to seeing what both teams can show us. And Bank is a map that, number one, tends to be actually Nips, one of their favorite maps. I feel like they play it far more than most others do. I don't unfortunately have, I don't the have stats. A, a, the stats in front of me, and there's no convenient pop-up that will come from Siege GG to tell me <laughs> these numbers and correct me live on broadcast when I say outlandish things and say, you know, I feel like who is they do really well on this, and then it pops up and it's like, well, they actually don't. Who is the fellow who was doing that? Uh, it's Black. It was Black, dude. He's such a cool guy. He was he was uh, he was in the back, and he was just like, here's a pop up, exactly what they're talking about, and had exact information. And it, it was, was like, it was like the VH1 like pop up yeah, videos that lower lower third that were from I don't know like 30 years ago. Yeah, but it, but it had good information. Great right. information. What do we have, Parker? We have the match ready for you. So we'll head over to Bank. A nice North American map here that we will compete on, and even though it does end up being a, uh, even though it does end up being a map that I feel like Nip typically does quite well on, it's also a map that plays out so differently depending on the way that uh, the teams ban, and depending on the way that the site rotation goes. Now we've seen teams almost completely forego that CCTV lockers room downstairs and go with Teller's archives on the main floor, go with CEO up above. And if you lose one of those, well then you don't need to go down to CCTV. CCTV does tend to play out very similarly. They're very small adjustments that teams make that separate them. So this is interesting right off the bat with the bands, Habana being taken out. Uh I say interesting. That's probably the wrong word. Predictable, um, but at the same time, very powerful, potent band. Co there. Commonplace is, yeah. is what I would say. Is that yeah. of the maps that we see hard breacher bands on, this ends up being one of them. Yeah, and, and especially Habana, because she's going to influence that those drops being opened up. They will make it so you can't open as many, or at least as easily. Technically, I believe it's still achievable with Maverick to get all the ones you need, though. It's just going to be a pain. Uh, other than that, pretty commonplace bands. Ying being taken down, it, it, that makes sense, uh, especially considering how tight uh, the bottom floor can be. So a lot of these attacker bands going to assist defending the bottom floor. And that makes sense. You talked about it yourself. Uh, you mentioned how teams have decided to start leaning away from defending the bottom floor. Lockers, is it, it's, not, it's not fun to defend. You kind of feel a little bit trapped at times down there. And the only you, the, the thing is you need to. If you're going to be winning all of your defenses, uh, you, you win tellers, you win CEO, or you cuss, or, or open area rather, whatever it is you're winning, you're gonna, probably going to end up in the bottom floor. So the banning out Habana, that commonplace ban, that's why you see it there, is because it'll make defending the basement so much easier. Those drop downs are going to be more difficult for the attackers to open up. But of course, because of that, they bring a thermite and a maverick. It also does put the attackers in a bit of a box where they almost always need to run a Maverick. We saw it, yeah. we saw it in DreamHack Winter from a number of teams that played Bank that Maverick's utility is not necessarily applied in the most efficient of ways to open up hatches and walls. He pokes holes, he causes issues for defenders to sit, he opens up lines of sight, but he's not really used or utilized in a way where he's gonna open up a wall for you to walk through. He's not gonna necessarily open up a hatch, but because hatches tend to be safer and Maverick does end up being quite vulnerable when he's seated there with his blowtorch out, it's best to use him on hatches. It does take quite a while, <laughs> Yeah. but overall, he's a very odd, soft breacher, hard breacher, line of sight style of operator. A lot of teams will run both a Thermite and a Maverick with a Hibana gone, just because you need to be able to open up one hmm. of those hatches. And oh man, Pino, upstairs inside of open area, completely caught off guard. He's playing by that, uh, that office down inside of open area and say goodbye and tax vaults in, kills him and vaults right back out, doing his best Gohan impression from our first match of the day. Yeah, caught off guard is right there from Pino, but uh, that's not a situation where the attacker outplayed him, did something amazing. It, that's a situation where Pino is just in a bad spot, leaving himself exposed, giving away free kill, and not a great operator to uh, give away for free at the beginning of the round. That's your Maverick, or sorry, did I just confuse Maestro for Maverick? That's your maestro. And what that means is all of his evil eyes are now locked in place and unable to zap anyone. Attackers so if they're looking in the wrong direction, and I'm sure they might be because this is pretty early into the round, 
they won't be very useful to the remaining defenders. Now, that control being established upstairs is going to be pretty huge, and Ince is making full use of it so far. Defenders still have control of server, which is kind of surprising considering we've seen half the round already transpire, and it seems to be the location that Ince wants to push into. And they're going to have to spend a big chunk of this remaining minute getting just server control, considering it's being contested so heavily. Lack of a mirror also means that lack of a pulse for Nip's side of things, and it means that Nip is going to roam quite aggressively. Yeah. Alibi often gets brought out in this situation by Nip, as they used to have either Psycho or PZD playing on that alibi here for Nip, but they're going to forego it. They're going to run with the Ella instead, who you can see playing on that server stairs, and oh man, that would have been embarrassing if Psycho had to miss that, but Yuke as the Ash flashing onto the server stairs. He'll be caught and quickly sent away. I'm not gonna lie, I did not think that was an Ash, but oh, oh no, Psycho able to get Boar as Boar does not fully clear upstairs. Peeks into it, just doesn't look everywhere. A huge mistake there from Thermite, now attack, trying to refrag and is successful, but look Attackers at the time. So much damage done by Psycho, and now his remaining teammates all just need to wait out this last 20 seconds. Act also gonna be down, Drunks will eliminate Kamikaze, and this ledge is actually gonna be picked up that's good teamwork there, but again, TikTok goes the clock. Wag playing from the A bomb in a great position as the smoke to be able to use his weapons to their fullest in this close proximity. But the grenade could potentially. Oh no! A beautiful play from Wag. And Julio also able to take down Duds. Now, that was a really easy holdout there at the end for Ninjas of Pajamas, but it mostly comes down to Ince not managing their clock very well, and that flank from Psycho. And an excellent play from Wog too. Now, because they didn't have the ability to pressure Wog behind that bomb chassis effectively, you had Ints pushing in one by one. You gave the smoke the opportunity to reload that tiny magazine of the SMG-11 and then cut you down. And a great push up from Wog to dodge the frag grenade that sailed over his head that was thrown out by the sledge. And the two-piece was pretty impactful for Nip. They did a great job holding that bottom site without a mirror, without a pulse, being mobile, and to recover as gracefully as Nip did. After losing Pino, Attack the first 30 seconds inside of open area, speaks can. to two things. Number one, it speaks to Nip's ability to roam on this site, or to roam on that site. You saw the castle that was given two free kills, essentially from Ince, apparently just not talking to each other. The ash goes down and the thermite literally backs up the stairs right into the castle. That was peculiar to say the least. Obviously at that point, I think they just had some miscommunication at play there. But yeah, ultimately two big mistakes from Ince. And then because they lost the thermite upstairs to the castle, you would have the remaining members of the team funnel in through one door, which is easily, easily controlled by the toxic canisters of a smoke. And of course, an SMG 11 that, unless you exploit that small magazine, it's going to do a pretty good job of winning Attackers that fight. So Wog holding it together. To then I'll push Ninjas in Pajamas on round number two, all the way up to CEO. Now, this is the site that I said, Michael, we've seen actually quite a high pick rate in as of late. It's been going up and up and up. A lot of teams actually replacing that bottom floor or the main floor of Teller's archives as a go-to site. I still think Teller's is the best site on bank. You know, it, it's definitely one of the more well-rounded ones, and it gives you a good um, a good amount of flexibility in terms of where you can roam. There aren't a lot of ways you can influence the top floor roaming in the basement, but you can definitely Defender do that exposed. if you're defending Teller. Psycho with the run out on the north windows, definitely a more popular strategy these days, but it almost always results in a refrag for the attackers if any kills are able to get even gotten by the defenders on the initial run out. So Psycho, good job to him, getting one, but it's a one for one, and that's it. Uh, and honestly, the exchange in the favor of the attackers, considering you got rid of the lesion. And pretty early into the round, means there's not going to be many traps. Kamikaze playing an awkward angle, and Yuke is going to make full use of that exposure. Pretty easy kill there onto the mute, and Ninja Pajamas falling apart one at a time here. You know, really great evil eye, though, looking into the main hallway. Gonna give him some good control. Wag going an aggressive play onto the Thermite hole and will eliminate Yuke. Ninjas of Pajamas will not relent on the aggression. They did it in the previous round. They're doing it yet again here, and it's working out for them. 
It's going to prompt a rotate now from Inns, who have lost two pretty important soft destructive tools. Lucky for them, they still have a Glaz whose caliber destruction with that DMR is pretty strong. And of course, a Glaz is always going to be quite a formidable operator to square off against as he just wanders right in. Wog gets with his gets caught with his back to the Glaz. An easy kill for Drunks as he'll peel off and throw onto a drone to try and assist Boar and Duds as Nip has lost the plot here on this round. That aggression that you spoke of that was working for them so unfortunately turned the tide the other way. Julio inside of Janitor Closet. He's got two rotates to get back into the site. It'll be very important for his team and can possibly greet somebody from Ince over on the Skylight Stairwell side of things. That's exactly where two members are. Pino pops out, he takes down Duds, and I don't know if Ninjas in Pajamas knows this, but their two remaining enemies are both coming from the same direction. And with a Maestro there, you can quarterback that play quite well. Potentially an evil eye able to see through this last remaining smoke could deny the diffuse plant, but that's only potential. Yes, indeed, there is, and here we go. Pino is going to be the most important operator here, but he goes for the spray instead of the zap, and he's running out of time. The diffuser could be planted regardless of the zap start, and yes, indeed, it will, but the flight from Julio, able to get one, but not two. Drunks left on one HP, and Pino only needs to land a single shot, but he's unaware of where the glass is exactly. Finally, position given away, but the spray initially will miss. You know, spraying continually. I don't know if he knows how little HP the glass has, but yes, the shotgun pistol will win the fight, regardless of Drunks landing a shot and putting Pino on very low HP. Ninjas of Pajamas will take the round. Unlucky from Julio, unable to get what he needed onto the glass, walking away with just a tiny bit of HP left. And kind of... That situation, I feel like, could have maybe been prevented by a bit of a confusing choice in priorities there from the maestro. He went for the yeah. sprays onto the mark. There's the desk in the way. He misses most of those shots onto the thermite, leaving Julio to have to rotate. Julio plays it well, keeps it cool, walks up making very minimal noise, and gets to a point where he greets both members of Ince as they push out of the CEO office, but then MPX does so little damage that it's very difficult, unless you're landing the headshots that you need to to clean up more than one person at a time especially when you're going off against a glass who can tear through you in two shots so that decision making could have possibly changed things for nip ultimately when you've got the alda and you've got a mark Attack i understand why you go towards that lmg bomb. that thing just tears through everything in its path but you could have possibly gone for the zap there yeah in hopes of helping eliminate uh, as much of the hp from the thermite as you could and it would cause some panic as well in Ince's side of things. Now, I'm on the same page with you there, Parker. The, the evil eye was definitely the right play, but it worked out in the end for Ninjas to Pajamas, and that's all that really matters. Now, we're going to be going to what I believe is a Teller's defense, though I can't quite tell. Didn't really notice in the beginning. Um, yes, indeed, it is a Teller's defense. So the third site here on the streak for Ninjas in Pajamas is they have been successful on the two more standard bomb sites, CEO and basement. Though Tellers has always been that number two for as uh, long as the bank has existed. So no open just yet for the ninjas. Though that's not terribly surprising. Most, I, I think open area is probably the least picked bomb site on bank. Again, I don't have the numbers, but I, yes, I would it, imagine. I mean, you don't need the numbers to know that. Yeah, it, it is. You're, you're absolutely correct. A lot of that is because the only real ways that we've seen teams be able to pull off successful open area holds have usually involved a mirror and a castle strat. It's tough when Mira is banned to make that happen. And, and of course, with Ince banning Mira, I would be surprised to see super successful and consistent open area defense. It's, it's just one of those sites that there's always going to be a hole somewhere in your defense. And it's, it's really hard to uh, patch everything up. But again, that's why we don't see it nearly as much as these others. Tellers is a solid one. Important that you roam upstairs for at least some amount of time. And ooh, intact, able to get some good information here. but. That's confusing. He marks the maestro, or, or somebody on his team at least marks the maestro, on his camera, which means uh, maestro, of course, aware that his position has been given away. Could potentially result in a kill, but you can see that maestro is very confident. He's staying on his cams. That means he has full information on his proximity. He's not worried about giving away a kill for free. Intact working his way into the main lobby from ATMs. Very dangerous play to be doing by himself with no one droning him in, but... He's committed now, fully. Kamikaze will need to have some kind of crossfire established, which I think that's exactly what Pino is going to try to do here. Easy to pop up behind the deployable shield for the Jaeger of Ninjas in Pajamas, but 
he's in a lot of trouble. Pino will pick up his second onto Drunks as this is a great bait right now from Ninjas in pajamas. Keeping that LMG of Pino all the way down over by Banana to just peek out and take down every single member of Ince. Just getting absolutely slaughtered yeah. by that LMG's fire rate. It's going to push Ince back and they're going to continue to lose bodies now as down goes Yuke. This is an excellent hold from Nip for the time being. I, I'm sure you've noticed this. It's Ince having a lot of information. Remember we talked about in the last match where it seemed like there wasn't enough information being gathered by Black Dragons, especially on their attacks? Well, here it's Ince having tons of information and no action to back up said information. They really seem uh, to struggle when they know where their opponent is, and that's still somewhat confusing. Now, in a two versus five, you're not putting a whole lot on the two. There's still potential for it. They've got a good Bomb chunk of control. But Psycho winning a fight against Boar, leaving just Duds. His position given away. He's able to get one and down another, but it's not going to matter. Jul uh, Julio will finish off the round. And Ninja Pajamas, that's three in a row for them. It was really good timing, too. You had three bodies thrown at the Zofia all yeah. at once because you had the advantage on your side. You knew you could do that, and one of them will almost assuredly land the refrag just because, well, Zofia doesn't have an endless amount of bullets in that magazine. So, Bank is a very tough map to clear correctly. It's a big part of why you see Jackal getting run so often, because he works quite well in the way that teams will often roam, and there are very few teams that roam as effectively on this map as Ninjas in Pajamas does. Ints have really struggled to be able to get in and really establish anything. Like you said, they've had an abundance of information. They have been using their drones quite well. They've caught a number of members of NIP completely off guard. Look at Pino in that first round. They did the same with Pino and Banana on that previous I mean, round, but nobody established any control. Yeah, they droned Pino before anyone else, and then Pino got two kills. And a big part of that was because there was no investment from Ints into the lobby side of Bank. There was a very uniform push from Skylight Stairwell, and then Pino was there to greet them. And there was, there was, it was actually, it was one person. And I, I talked about it uh, in, in the middle of the round. It was one person in main lobby. It was intact on Buck, and he was alone. So an investment, but more like... I wouldn't call one person right, solo entry with yeah, no information like, and investment. More like throwing away your, your value. Yes. Or your... Um, you, whatever. Especially when Buck needs to be in CEO. Especially when you need Buck in CEO to be able to tear away at that floor to well, try and pull off a, a play on the Tellers and Archives. I think what they were trying to do with the Buck is push him underneath. Possibly. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what the plan was, to be honest with you. Overall, a confusing. it was a confusing play, and it was something that Pino was able to win, regardless of Pino being Pino's position being given away. Now... Very similar to what we saw in the Black Dragons Team Liquid matchup was Team Liquid came firing out of the gates. They take three rounds. They look really good. And it doesn't look like Black Dragons is really doing much of anything. Is Ince going to be able to find themselves in a position where, like, Black Dragons are able to close that gap? Well, it's a question that's going to need to be answered. And up against this composition from Ninjas in Pajamas, they're going to find a couple things that will frustrate Ince. And the first one will obviously be this clash of Psycho, who's playing at the top of server stairs with a deployable shield in front of her. So even if she gets hit with a possible Zofia concussion mine, which isn't possible because Ince doesn't have Zofia in their arsenal, or any way to knock that shield away, Clash will still likely be covered from that deployable shield from the midriff down. Now, there's a Capitao on the board from Intact, so there is a deliberate hard counter from Ince that can try to push back the Capitao. Julio underneath the hatch, we'll see the Maverick trying to open things up and he's ready with a C4 and boom goes the dynamite, but no, Duds gets away in time. Just a little bit too slow from Julio there, unable to capitalize on the Maverick. Yeah, he needed to predict the uh, breaking of the hatch. When you've got like a Habana charge or a Thermite, they have a countdown and you're really used to it. But Maverick, it's a little bit harder to read how much of the drop down he's opened up and thus harder to time your C4. That's why you had that delayed reaction because he wasn't predicting, he was reacting. Now, Ince going for what looks like a back push through the drop downs as the smokes and flashes start coming out. And uh, they've already managed to get a foothold here, but it's a dangerous one. These bars can really work against you. And speaking of working against you, WAG able to get the first kill on this engagement. Clash has rotated back and 
She is going to be a huge thorn in the side of Ince. And oh no, a vault over an opponent, but Dud's actually able to take down Wag, who is underneath the window. Perfect timing to get that kill. Intact going for the defuse plant. He's got no support from his teammates, but there's no one from Nip actually trying to stop him. Pino able to down the, or actually not Pino able to down the Clash. I believe that might've been the Firebolt downing the Clash. Pino able to get a kill though for himself. And Clash inside of B is going to be picked up and back in play. That's going to be really big when they go for disabling that Diffuser. Drunk's in a really clutch position, but he's got to deal with the shield. And that's not an easy feat when you can't shoot through it. Psycho able to take down Boar as he whips out the SMG. And a second for Psycho. That's very impressive using that two-burst SMG. Into the pajamas have successfully retaken onto the site. And what a clear it was. Clash at the spearhead. I like the rotate there that you saw from Inns to go for the vault drop, realizing that they didn't have the tools necessary and didn't feel comfortable attacking CCTV. Like we've said, CCTV, when you're trying to attack it, tends to play out very similarly. There's a rhythm to it. Yeah. Especially if there's a mirror in play and especially if there's a pulse in play. So what do you do? You throw out the rule book and you try something new. And that's what Inns did. They decided to go for a vault drop, which we've seen many times before. And while Nip did go for the rotate, they essentially got boxed out. You had to worry about a glass, to worry about smokes on the board, and you really only have a clash from Ninjas in Pajamas who's there to possibly stop you. And I think that the way it was handled from Ince went well, but I don't think they were expecting Nip to rotate the way they did and catch them so far off guard. And I mean, Clash used to be able to switch really fast to that two-burst SMG sidearm. What ends up happening is, well, the Clash dives behind cover, pulls out the SMG, pops back in, and catches two members of Ince who were distracted by Pino the Maestro, and a push from Nip that was coming through lockers, allowing the Clash to get the two kills to break the back of Ince's post plant and open things up for Nip, at which point they just kept rolling, knowing they had those numbers advantage, and that there was really no escape for Ince. And that's one of the problems with attacking onto the locker side of things with a vault drop is you can't get out of there. Where can you go? You can sit in the elevator hatch or you can sit in vault. But a lot of times the defenders will likely cut off your push to garage. You won't really have the main stairs to be able to get out. And depending on the way the site is set up, you might have a lot of soft walls that lead in towards the vault hatch. And of course you've got the big window over by lockers as well. So for instance, we had a lot working against them in this scenario. And as good I think as their execute was, Ninjas in Pajamas, their correction in the post plant worked a lot better. So this is interesting. Ince has rotated away from the glass, a tool that they had been bringing consistently on, I believe it was Drunks. They've just decided to forego in this round and instead bring a Montane. Now typically you would, have, you would see the Montane in tandem with the glass, but not so here. An interesting decision made by Ince. It has been working out somewhat for Ince, but uh, not as well as I think they were hoping, and that's probably why they've decided to go for this rotation. Attacking on to CEO. Thermite should be at the top of Skylight right now, uh, but he's instead on the roof looking for an angle into A. I'm not really sure what he's trying to accomplish here, probably just watching for a run out, but there's no one to bait for him, so he's kind of just wasting time. We've seen this be a problem for uh, Ince in the past, and Hopefully they're able to correct it soon. Looks like he's trying to get the batteries. That would be my hunch. But uh, it's going to be a difficult angle to accomplish. Psycho will take down Duds as well. So it's getting even worse for Ensign. From below, intact, able to get those batteries. So there you go. Okay, mission accomplished. Thank you, Sledge. Now, the evil eye there. <laughs> I don't think they realize it doesn't do damage to the shield. They're just kind of... You think they don't know that? I think they know that. I think they're just trying to spook them. They're just spooking drunks. Yeah, I mean, when, I mean, hey, you know, he can't shoot back. The evil eye's not going to get destroyed. Michael, I was being facetious. I wasn't being serious. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think as professionals, realize. they probably know. Yeah, they probably know. So thermite charges will go off on both of the panels, and uh, that's going to be really good control there for Ince. And uh, because they still have that Montaigne in play, of course, uh, he's going to be an important tool when they go for that actual site push. I really like this change from Ince, and I think it's something that we can talk about when the round is concluded, but I don't think the Glass was the play for the way that Ince mm -hmm. was using him, and I think establishing drunks on an operator, that is much more difficult to deal with, and look at what Nip has in their arsenal. At best, 
they have one Nitro Cell on Julio. That's about it. You don't really have any way to stop this Monte. It's a great read from Ince. He's just gonna waltz right into sight. Two trades from Yuke and Psycho coming out as Pino goes down, but Julio is there uh -oh. to give his team the advantage, and now Drunks is just waiting, but the Diffuser is very far down. Intact trying to take out Julio. He'll succeed. It's just Drunks and Intact now as the pistol comes out. He'll down the Jaeger, and, well, Drunks is there to finish him off. Are they going to be able to silence the Montane? Oh, Drunks with two, almost catching a third as Psycho nosed him. Pistols, one HP. He's in a tough spot. The Mountain will just wander right in, and the Doc will have to fight against a shield. And the plant going down from intact. Everybody's oh, below, but no! Psycho gets the kill, and oh, no! Drunks! What are you doing? Inadequate coverage and a great shot to stop the plant and Nip will continue to roll as they are up five to nothing. Absolutely heartbreaking there from Drunks. You saw, instead of trying to hunt down his opponent, he decided it would be most prudent to assist his teammate planting the diffuser by covering him being Montaigne, that, right? And he was correct in that assumption, so he started backing up, but no, he went the wrong way. Ah. A truly heartbreaking failure on Drunk's part there, costing his team the round. There's no way to put it other than that. And now Ninjas of Pajamas find themselves up 5-0 in bomb. what could have been a 4-1 situation. They have to be so grateful right now to Drunk's. Oh. Tough. They'll put Drunks back on the Glass, though. But I, I did want to focus on this just a little bit. So the Glass, obviously, on Bank in particular, you've got a lot of you've got a lot of lines of sight. You've got a lot of soft walls. CCTV, he's, he's you know, here. he's he's great here. But CCTV downstairs, Glass is very site specific. So CCTV doesn't tend to be a site that you see him played all that often on. He can do great coverage inside a server. You can hold down the doorway, you can throw your smokes, you can cut off the rotate, especially if there's a mirror playing behind there uh, inside a CCTV. It'd be really strong. But when you're looking at Teller's archives, when you're looking at CEO, Glass, his usage soars. Yeah. And there's a lot of teams that use him very effectively. Oh no. I mean, the Glass at this point is also used often to stop spawn peaks. A lot of them that come from the front doors of Bank, not expecting Psycho to go for a spawn peak at the back door and take out the sledge of intact and your primary soft destructor is going to be removed from play. A quick aside here, that, that Psycho's 11th kill. He's having a good day. Yeah. He's having a pretty good day. Now, glad that we can see what Drunks is doing on these windows. On the side of Bank over by the parking garage, this is what I was talking about. Glass is very site specific and... Oh! 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 Sit down, Psycho, take a seat. That's a beautiful shot from Drunks on the windows. He gets his kill and he maneuvers on over. And that is part of the reason why you bring a glass when you know that these teams have to go towards one of the sites that are not fortified in the basement. Because there's usually going to be roamers who are going to be in positions where you can spot them through a window in bank. And that's exactly why you bring the glass. But Drunks, I don't think, was getting the most value out of it. That's why he went with the Montane. It was a good choice, but overall, it was a bit more of a mistake from Psycho than it was a great play from the Glass of Drunks. If you know there's a Glass on the board, he's probably going to be somewhere around Parking Garage or on Repel on Windows by Front Lobby, at which point you're very vulnerable. Yes, indeed. Now, even exchange so far in this round. Drunks able to refrag it. That's really important. Pino aggressive onto the Skylight Stairs, and he will just die to duds. I think that was the wrong play there for Pino, and he's been making a lot of those mistakes in this match today. Dots will get his second as well as Wag tries to, uh, you know, compound that wrong play by giving his own. Rushing oh, into the uh, double door by Skylight. Not not a good call there for the Maestro and Smoke. I don't really know how else to put that. Julio and Kamikaze now the last two defenders and uh, of course it is going to be a defense of Tellers. So Kamikaze playing the long game, hoping to potentially flank his opponents. Uh, by hiding behind the CEO desk. Could work out for him, but as Valkyrie's position is given away, Boar, some great drone work there. He's waiting for a marked and a shot through the wall, but Valkyrie luckily moves. Good call there for Julio. He probably doesn't know it, but uh, he just narrowly avoided death, so good job. Coming back to the unreinforced wall, and uh, again, very exposed to potential mark through the wall and a shot, and oh, just barely stops the thermite charge. 
It's one of the follies of trying to do that on a soft wall, is that for anybody there, you can shoot the exothermic charge through that soft wall quite easily. It's very loud and you can see the outline too. So here we have it, Nip holding on for dear hope. As the wall goes next to Julio, but he looks the wrong way. Drunks is there, and it's all going to rest on the shoulders of Kamikaze to try to keep this to go. a flawless first half. The plant going down, going to get stopped. Kamikaze takes out Drunks, but will not get the planter in bore. There's two semi-hard breachers in both the Thermite and the Maverick there. We've almost a certainly established a cross. Maverick will give his position away as Duds is there, and a quick peek from Kamikaze, losing half of his HP, and setting us up in a 1v1. A gigantic hole in the wall will be a major problem for Kamikaze as he'll have no cover to go for the diffuser. It's going to be a tense moment. He's not going to be able to long arm this and Boar will be in a very advantageous position on the stairs just waiting for the Jaeger to peek. He's going to have to go for the kill and you hear it first and no, Kamikaze is not going to land the shots needed. Boar pops up and down goes Kamikaze. Ints will finally find themselves on the board. It comes in their very last attack to try cauterize this open wound that has been inflicted by Nip. We'll switch sides and see what Ince can do on defense. But it's a commanding lead right now for the ninjas in pajamas. Nice try there to Kamikaze. But, uh, yeah, that was pretty much an unwinnable situation there at the end. Uh, Would have had to see a pretty substantial mistake made by Boar in order for Ince to lose that round. Uh, I don't know, it's going to be Tellers, it looks like. As the first D... Or, no, no, pardon me. Lockers as the first defense for Ince. And uh, not exactly surprising, especially considering the ban that we have on the Habana. Montaigne being six picked into here for Ninjas of Pajamas, so there's going to be making sure they bring a set of smokes the there. Not going to be the Dukabees, but uh, said the shield operators. And Montaigne is very, very useful downstairs um, in attempting to plant that diffuser if you're coming from the server side, especially. Overall, Good kit here for Nip. And they've got both the hard destructors that they can bring. They've got all the soft destruction they could need. Especially going to be useful to have those nades and the ash charges if they have to deal with somebody holding on to the server stairs, as is a common strategy. We saw it from Nids of Pajamas when they were defending the bottom floor. And they've got the Montaigne for the actual site push. So everything looking good. Interesting pick here for Ince. They've Five managed to, er, well, they've decided to bring a cap can. As you can see, Boar, I mean, it's not a, he's not a bad operator, to, if we're being honest. After he got changed to uh, being a two-speed, immediately a, a better operator. You still don't see him very often because it, it relies on negligence from your opponent to be useful. So if, you're, if your enemy doesn't forget to check doorways, then essentially he's just a you know, a two speed with a pretty good gun and impacts. And that's not exactly a bad thing. It just means you could potentially be losing on on some utility. And that's why you don't see him play very often. But clearly, the defenders right now, uh, Ince, are relying on indirect damage. Because, let's be honest, they're not winning many fights. I think a big part of this too is that Nip has been so swift in their entry, and I don't think this, or it is so swift typically on their entry, and I don't think this round is going to be any different. Of course, this is Nip's first time, and historically they have done quite well at, at being able to take map control very quickly. And Psycho being the main point of focus at the moment for Ince, we'll just kind of wander right in. Capcan realizing there's likely going to be a bait as a shot through the wall will miss Boar. So the Capkin will not take any damage. Boar picking up his very first kill in the previous round. As he had been held off of that scoreboard, doing the diligence of a, uh, of a support uh, operator, not exactly getting good uh, good numbers onto that scoreboard, and most of it being off. The Psycho under fire from the Legion. This log gets baited into Boar, and it's a crossfire established from Ince, but it's the Capkin, and oh man, Psycho just losing out as can't really see around all those racks. Sleep at the wheel is how I would describe that. A confusing play there for Psycho. Good job to Boar though, managing to secure the flank and get the knife. Pino starting to push his way into Tellers and he's worried about that crossfire and rightfully so. There's quite a lot of barrels pointed his way, but he will finally dispatch Boar who was doing a lot of work in Tellers and Archives. So somehow, confusingly, this is a pretty even round. The cap can trap will down Kamikaze. So there you go. That's that negligence working in favor of Ince. All done there to Boar setting up the cap can traps. 
And Tax still playing by the server. He's got the perfect kit to hold on to those server stairs. SMG 11 and the shotgun, typically seen on smoke, but no reason not to bring it on mute now that he can do that. It's a good time to use that utility, but I think this might be a bit too slow for Nip here. They're gonna really have to hasten this push. They only have 20 seconds left. Match point is theirs if they can walk away with a victory here, but Drunks will take out Kamikaze and Nip will even the odds. Pino there taking out Drunks. They've got time working against them quite heavily, and this is a big problem for Nip, trying to figure out where these remaining members are. Pino gets one, so there's only intact left, but he needs to stop the plant, but Pino gets oh. it at the last second! Nip somehow managed to walk away with the round when it looked completely out of reach. Oh my goodness, what a magnificent round from Pino. Yeah, certainly the hero of the round there. I mean, it, it all started with clearing out Boar finally inside of archives. It took a long time for it to happen. And, you know, he, he was the hero then. He carried that torch till the end of the round. Uh, very well played there to, uh, to Pino. Now, it is match point. We've gone to that six rounds for Ninjas of Pajamas. And uh, it did look like that was going to be another one where Ince was starting their fight back, but they could not make it work in the end. Need to locate and so bomb. it's going to be even more difficult for them moving forward. They're going to go back downstairs instead of deciding, or instead of trying to force a different bomb site. This is this is really really something to that round, that individual effort from Pino and the way that the way that things uh, worked out. He gets a 4K on that round. Absolutely impressive. So close to getting the ace. Yeah. But couldn't do it. Very well done. Indeed. Now, again, it's forcing out the basement remaining. one more time. Very dangerous to do, but I gotta be honest, I, I don't blame them considering left. how close that last round was. Everything was going in his way, Attackers and then Pino you know, showed up Attackers and out got a 4K. A so, Truly, uh, I, th I think if, you, if you're comfortable in the basement, <laughs> assuming uh, that doesn't happen again, it, it could totally work out for you. Now, they've decided to bring different kit. Instead of bringing the cap can, they have rotated away from that. They got the pulse now so that they can uh, play a little bit more of the uh, server game. They can deny the plant if it comes from the typical location, which is server, using that C4 and heartbeat detector. Sense. But that didn't seem to be uh, the strategy from Ninjas of Pajamas the last time it, they attacked this site. I think the reason it wasn't is because of how much manpower they lost upstairs. They might have decided to go to server if they had a full uh, uh, lineup. I want to point out the smoke of intact on the server stairs here because that's a risky place to put that no. much utility. We have seen many, many rounds where they have put a smoke on server stairs on bank, various teams. You get Zofia'd, you get firebolted, you get flashed, and next thing you know, what ends up happening? You lose your smoke really early on. That utility you say goodbye to for the entire round, and the defense is left with a pretty important uh, staple gone. That's a big hole that is, is very tough to fill. You know, last round what we saw from Inst is that they put the mute with the same exact uh, weapon lineup on the server stairs. That's smart. Though. And that's smart because... Smarter. You, well, yeah, smarter. Because the mute jammers are on the floor, man. You're, you're not going to be losing that utility. It's not a huge deal. You could potentially lose the C4, but honestly, it's better. Oh, wow, what a shot from Duh. Drunks. He's been landing some nutty shots in this match. And Psycho's trying to refrag, but he just gives himself away. Drunks will be down, but he's done his damage, and Yuke also will take down Wag. So, Ninja's Pajama is falling apart at the seams here. Intact, able to get Kamikaze. Julio will get Duds, but it's just Julio in the one versus four. Make that one versus three. So he eliminates Boar. Eats a lot of damage, though, and uh, he's going to have to find three headshots. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. It's three headshots or bust here for Julio. It's going to be definitely a tall task. Flashbangs are going to help him out quite a lot but he's aware of his flank as it's being called out from the drones. Goes for the push, and it is poorly timed. Intact, able to get the final kill. Whether it, whether he gets a kill or not, he's immediately traded off because yeah. the lesion was just by the vault door, and the Thermite had nowhere to go unless he was able to do a crazy um, 180 
flick onto the head of the lesion. That was that was over for Ninjas in Pajamas. So I want to talk about the play of the Montane inside a garage with very minimal cover yeah. and then drunks with two incredible kills to be able to stop the garage push and force Nip to basically have to abandon their plan. So if we're being honest, the Montane wasn't playing poorly until his teammate died. And his teammate dying was unexpected. I gotta be honest. The Montane was obviously calling out everything Drunks was doing. And for most of that round, Drunks was staring at the Montane shield. But Drunks just took two seconds to pivot, look at garage door, one-tap his opponent, and then return to the Montane. And that threw Montane through a loop. He was unsure what to do in that situation. Uh, I don't really blame him. Uh, it's, it's a difficult situation when, you're, when your assistant uh, gets taken down with relative ease. And you, you can see, I remember I was talking about how Psycho, that was his 11th kill. Well, he hasn't done very much since. Hino has 10 now, and Drunks, man, we're just talking about there, the Maestro, has 10 himself. And that's why Ince has stayed in this match. We're gonna sit on match point all the way till the end of this map. And it's gonna be a... Five seconds left. Are we? <laughs> well, I mean, it's... No matter what happens, we're gonna be on match point. I'm true. Because even if Ince ties it, the final round will be match point because it will be 6-5, Michael. That's how numbers work? Yes. <laughs> Don't you ever doubt me again. <laughs> I, okay. And this is going to be important for Ince to be able to dig deep here because you've got, right now, Ninjas in Pajamas have Ince by the throat. Yes. I mean, they just need to win one round. I mean, they, they just need to win one round. Not exactly a given. We have seen games True. tighten up. We have seen pretty impressive comebacks from 4-1s, 5-1s, and, and I guess now 6-1s we will need to see because the format has changed and we continue to see that number, that round count grow. I'm sure we've seen a couple of them already. So when you look at the way that Nip is going to be attacking here, the Montane and the Dokabi, you're going to have a lot of paralysis on the side of Nip's attack. As for Ince, got the smoke and a lesion. Being able to handle basically anything that Nip is going to be able to throw at them in terms of utility from the defender side of things. It'll be a Teller's defense for Ince. Instead of going to CEO upstairs, which is what Nip had been favoring on their second run through, Pre, it sounds like a pre-C4 might actually be placed here by Julio, or just above Julio's head. He can actually see the C4, but it's going to be tough for him to get it. This is perilous for Pino because if that C4 goes off, blow the buck sky high. Yeah, so potentially a double effect there from the C4 if used properly. It's Julio's, shot, though. He's trying to work his way in there, and you're absolutely right. No longer beeping away. And that's going to allow Julio the freedom to push in to Tellers without being contested right now. It's not a whole lot the defense can do about that. They do have the Legion Traps and the Gas Canisters, but uh, not really being put to full use just yet. They need to start whittling away at Julio's HP if they want to have any hope at winning this round and keeping in this match. But Pino and Wag are going to get two kills. And uh, it's looking really desperate for Ince right now. Potentially the last minute of this match. Intact is really low on HP, but you've got Boar there. He's going to light up the shield, but there is there are no armor-piercing bullets. Intact with just a shred of HP will take one down, and no, Intact! A team kill on top of Duds, and Intact picking up one before. Oh, Intact no. will now be down by Pino from above, and Duds grabs his kill in a 1v2, looking to try and lock this away and give Nip yet another victory on the season. Yeah, Kamikaze on the main stairs, and Duds will be frozen in place to turn off the ringing cell phone from the Dokabi. Wandering towards the open area, and look towards the double doors into the hallway. Could possibly catch the Zofia here. A mark from the camera will at least let Duds know that there is one warm body nearby and holding a very tight pixel angle. The Zofia wanders into sight. He sees the bucket, he'll take one down. Oh, Duds, the double kill out of nowhere on Napino and Kamikaze will shut the door on Ninjas in Pajamas taking the match and will require at least one more round for both of these teams to continue to play on. What a recovery from Ince there. The stars aligned for Duds in that moment. Everything was in his corner. The information, the positioning, clearly Ninjas in Pajamas were unaware of where that Jaeger was. I'm assuming they thought he was in archives. I cannot blame them for that assumption, though I can blame them for not taking the time that they had to actually figure out where their opponent was. There had to have been some kind of tool they could have used to do just that. If there wasn't, then that's poor management of utility. 
and by of course utility i mean drones either way well done there to duds Nice try to Ninjas of Pajamas. They did meet up. So you got to give them credit for taking their last two players and pushing them together. Just fortunately for them, they exposed themselves too much there in that last situation. Now, CEO for Ints. We're going to be going back upstairs. And this is actually the first time that they will be defending it. So this is a new thing. Potentially good for Ints. Uh, no, not potentially. I would say outright good for Ints because... Uh, e even if they lose here, they, they, they gain somewhat the element of surprise. They can do something a little bit different, maybe catch their opponent off guard. And honestly, the way that this has been playing out, that's exactly what they need. I mean, it's how they won the last round. So, Ints have a little bit going for them here. In terms of lack of knowledge. At what point do you reach a, a situation where Ninjas and Pajamas have lost their momentum and essentially have not maybe thrown the game away? but found themselves in a position where they could have ended this sooner and Inns has everything working in their favor to, to close this gap and essentially make it nigh impossible for them to be able to actually get the round that they need. I mean, I think you said it correctly when you were talking about it earlier, is Ninjas and Pajamas will, for the remainder of this match, have the advantage. Uh, no matter what, if they win one round, it is over. And, okay, it might take them quite a lot of rounds to get that one, but uh, they are going to still continue, you know, they're still going to have that confidence. It's not just going to evaporate because they're losing a couple of rounds. I mean, that last one, they got, I mean, it's got really lucky. So, I don't know. I, I think I think there's definitely something to be said about you're know, losing momentum, but not when you're on match point, not when you get on match point so early on. Very fair point there. As Kamikaze can't see the outlines the way that we can, knowing that there's a soft wall that separates what looks to be the outline of the dock from Drunks. A bomb has been located. Kamikaze in the pretty typical glass spot, and Drunks, who's been landing some pretty good shots as this match has gone on, will test out the limits of that ACOG and take out Wog and say goodbye to the Ash. Interesting that they've moved Wog onto the ACOG, or onto the Ash, because Wog will typically play your support role and isn't necessarily the person that you're going to assume getting, will get most of the frags. It's taken about 90 seconds now for Nip to be able to get in towards the main lobby, and a big part of that kill onto the Ash falls onto the shoulders of Psycho, not being able to give the coverage as the Montane of his teammate to keep Wog alive. You can see that Pino is aware of Yuke in the elevator, but he's actually going to miss the grenade, it looks like. C4 from Yuke will also miss, and another grenade misses. So that's some really bad use of utility from Pino, and Julia will also go down with him downstairs. Excellent job to Inns taking that, but Kamikaze able to get two for himself and keep his team in this match. Psycho, a pretty easy kill there onto Duds. Good game sense to check the desk but intact in the hallway will catch Kamikaze, who is attempting to rotate to support his teammate. Psycho left in the one versus two. He's gonna have to ADS to win this, and it's a big risk, but he doesn't really have a choice. Misses the initial shots and eats a lot of damage there, putting him on just about 30-40. Missing some more shots, gonna go prone. It's an unconventional way to play a shield, but he, again, does not have a choice. He cannot avoid the crossfire. Pistol out, and he will land the shots on two attack, finally. But Boar is on full HP, and Psycho has less than 25, meaning he will die to a single bullet. 15, 15 seconds, seconds left here for Psycho, and he knows his opponent is somewhere near Banana, but he retreats to the main lobby. Left. The drone's calling this out. The drop and no headshot. Boar will get the kill, and Ints keep themselves in this match. An unpredictable ending that looked like we might actually see the Montane be able to stick it, but it's not. That's not what they. Uh, that's not what the doctor had in store. Doctor had an order for us. Just to clarify my statement, because it technically was a headshot there uh, for the uh, for the maestro. I meant the Montane had to headshot in that situation. There was no way he was going to get all of the HP of a three armor, and somehow that maestro would miss all his shots unless it was a headshot. So we said that Bank coming in was one of the most balanced maps over the last season, and so far there have been two attacking victories, mm -hmm. and there have been, uh, well, two attacking eight, victories, eight defending victories. So, <laughs> a little bit lopsided. Maybe it's the map. I mean, uh, I, I, Batters can hold I, I, here I on Bank, and when you look at the operator bands, the game. defense are running it up. And that tends to happen when you lose a Hard Breacher on a map that relies so much on a Hard Breacher working. Now, we've seen a lot of early action from both of these teams. If you lose your Thermite or your Maverick early, 
it becomes very difficult for the attackers to be able to continue on with what they had planned, be able to walk away with the round victory. A lot of that does fall on to the shoulders of Ninjas in Pajamas for banning out Hibana. Yeah, true. And I mean, the defense still have Maestro available. Most teams have been able to play without Mira, so not the end of the world that you don't have a Mira available. Valkyrie sees a quite a bit of play in Bay. She's not going to be able to be banned, along with Maestro, along with Echo, and along with Mira. You gotta leave at least two of those unbanned. I think a lot of that speaks to the way that these teams are playing bank. And both teams have done a pretty good job of roaming as well, not just keeping map control, but being able to take down the entries as well. But on top of that, I've been actually more impressed with the way the teams have made the changes throughout the course of a round, those mid-round mid -round adaptations as we call them. Those have been far more impressive for me in regards to what we've seen because it really speaks to the way the teams have been able to recover after they've gotten a lead off kill. Like the maestro of drunks there was just tempting Psycho and welcoming a possible engagement through the window in towards tellers and archives. It's not going to be there. So yeah, actually I wanted to bring this up. Uh, Psycho has decided to rotate onto Dugaby instead of playing the Montane. Uh, and I totally understand why we would have that rotation for Ninjas and Pajamas. Uh, the Montane... The Montane itself was working. The problem was the support. Uh, every uh, Over the last two, three rounds, the supporting player for the Montane was being taken down by one or another Ints player. Uh, whether it was Drunks or... Uh, I believe it was Duds who was also getting some kills onto that support player. Whoever it was that was doing it, not having, some, uh, not having a gun behind your Montane makes him a glorified, indestructible drone. Uh, and if there's no one to support the drone to get the kills, then what is he really doing other than establishing information? Um, so, rotating Psycho onto uh, a gun is, I think, a sensible change here, especially considering how how good Psycho's aim individually is. Yeah. Good gunners on both sides of the equation here for both Ints and Ninjas in Pajamas. Drunks has really come into his own playing on that Maestro. Psycho gets caught in a crossfire and has to head for the hills as he tries to take out the shotgun-wielding mute of Intact on server stairs, but the Doka be getting lit up from inside of Archives will fall off. Meaning that Nip's gonna have to go back to the drawing board here, and Pino creeping up onto the main stairs with Doka be now outside. This is a waste of time, essentially, for Nip. Julio taking out Yuke, but it's a perfect trade as Yuke responds, both hitting each other at the same time. Losing your Thermite, though, to a Valkyrie. That's a very good trade for Ints at this moment in time. So it means that your only hard breacher, quote unquote, that will be left is Kamikaze. Pino eliminating Boar, but Pino gets down at the same time, and Psycho and Kamikaze very low as now Wog takes quite a bit of damage from a Capkin trap. Everybody very weak on side of Nip. It's gonna be a reset on Napino as Wog through the wall takes out Duds and opens things up and gives Nip its best opportunity to put this matchup away. They've had a number of opportunities and Banan unable to seal the deal. Intact flirting with disaster from below, but he's gonna get one, but he can't get the second dove on by Wog. Drunks will need to clutch this for his team. He sees the Ash, he takes him down and oh. Drunks! What a magnificent clutch with the Alda. Unable to dislodge the Maestro inside of Garage. He'll take three away. And Nip cannot seal the deal. And we'll go to our very final round to see the exciting conclusion to this game is. Jeez. I mean, that was... First of all, that was a Nip round. They should have had that pretty easily. Uh, Trunks, great job there to clutch it out once more. I mean, he's really been showing up for his team here. But uh, if we take a step back, as much as Nip should have won that round, strategically, I look at the way they were playing, and I think they shouldn't have. I mean, they were entirely too hesitant attacking the top floor and middle floor. One of the slower clears that we've seen so far today and yes, it is bank, so we can give them that. Uh, that's definitely a consideration. But they were just afraid, it looked like. And you were talking about at what point do you really lose the momentum? Uh, it was that round for Ninjas and Pajamas. It was that round right there. Uh, I did not think that they were going to let that happen. I'm surprised that, that, uh, that it ended up getting to them in the end. Uh, and if we take an even further step back, we look at this match as a whole, we can now confidently say, it's the map. 
I mean, uh, clearly right now, both of these teams are struggling on attack. As you stated, I mean, we've seen two attack wins so far. Uh, and they were right next to each other at the end of the first half and the beginning of the uh, second half. So, and one for each team, of course. So, I, I yeah, cl clearly, uh, this is this is the closest we're going to be coming to a draw in the season. We have none so far for Latin America, no draws. Uh, a lot of seven fives. So this would be the first if the trend continues. It's on Ninjas and Pajamas to get two attack wins to be the ones to uh, break free from the trend if they want to get the win. This is one of those games where if Nip doesn't end up walking away with the full points and they just end up tying with ins here, this is one of those matches where, let's say something goes wrong with Nip. Let's say they're facing off and they might get relegated or they might fall like a point away from the playoffs. This is a match that they will look back on and say, we blew it. Yeah. They let this match slip away. And I, I, I hesitate to say it because I know that a lot of people will make it seem like we're talking down on Ince. But this has been a combination of Ince playing very well, but also Nip struggling to do things that they have been doing quite routinely throughout the course of the map prior to this. Keep in mind, it was a 6-1 at one point. You just need one round. Yeah, and I, I will reiterate that, yes, it is It is a big part of this is the map. But at the same time, 6-1, no excuses. No excuses. I, I'm sorry, you can't You can't put it all on the map. That it, You just need one round. And they came so close. Ninja Bidamas have come so close so many times to getting that one round. And this could potentially be another close forward. attempt. Julio, Early kill on Tuyuk. I really like that we're seeing Julio being the one here on the Montane. Uh, I think he's already starting to uh, do pretty well with that Montane. The only thing that's really going to work against Nip here is that beautiful Valkyrie camera inside of the lobby in which Drunks is going to try to capitalize as Psycho extends the lead of Nip in terms of man count. Wog will be there to take out Duds, but Drunks, the savior of Ince, will have to work tightly with Boar on the Maestro as it is a 4v2 in favor of Nip. We haven't had, uh, we haven't had a single tie this season in NA as well. well. We're gonna eat a lot of damage from above and Kamikaze will finish him off, leaving just Drunks, as you said, the hero, but he's gonna miss some very crucial shots and Psycho will lock it out. Ninjas in Pajamas finally win the match 7-6, or 7-5, pardon me. 7-6 is not possible. Excellent job to them, but it took way too much time. All of that effort, all of that momentum from Ince, and they walk away empty-handed. Mm -hmm. How defeating a feeling that must be for this Ince team is that they gave it their all, they came back, drunks in particular, going absolutely super saiyan, if I can use that terminology. Sure. And he got the most frags of anyone in this entire match. And he, it was all for naught. And they were clutch impact frags. Two rounds in 